What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the show. So today we're going to take a look and a listen to Dr. Swagel. He's going to be talking about Social Security reform and an increase, potential increase. So that's what we're going to focus on in this video. But first off, if you guys could do me a favor, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification, and then click all. By clicking all, you'll get notified anytime we post a video. We do daily videos here, so by clicking the bell notification and clicking all, you should be getting updated every day. And just a reminder, thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. And if you'd like to follow me on threads, you can at the TEC Show Live. Okay, so let's go ahead and listen to what Dr. Swagel has to say about Social Security reform. This was during a Senate hearing on Social Security back in July. Here we go. Uh, Dr. Swagel, please proceed with your testimony. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you, Chairman Whitehouse, Ranking Member Grassley, and members of the committee. Uh, for inviting me to testify about the Social Security program. And it's, it's a pleasure to participate with the distinguished experts on this panel. Um, as you set out, the Social Security system faces a significant financial challenge as the resources available to the system under current law are not sufficient to cover scheduled benefits within the next decade. In our projections, the Old Age and Survivors Insurance Trust Fund is exhausted in 2032, and the Disability Insurance Trust Fund is exhausted in 2052. If the two trust funds were combined, in our projections, they would be exhausted in 2033. Now, after the trust funds are exhausted, we project that the resources available to pay benefits would be 25% less than the amount of scheduled benefits. Now, about 79 million people, which is about one-fifth of the population, will receive Social Security benefits in 2033. If all benefits were reduced by the same percentage, lower income households would re reduce their spending by more and increase the amount by which they work by more in percentage terms than households with lifetime incomes. Legislative action would be needed to avoid this scenario. The, now, the imbalance between the system's revenues and scheduled benefit payments extends beyond 2033 and it grows over time. We project that the actuarial deficit over the next 75 years would equal 1.7% of GDP or 5.1% of taxable payroll. So that is that scheduled benefits could be paid through 2097 if payroll taxes were increased from the current 12.4% to 17.5%. That's a relative rise in, in the tax rate of 41%. Now alternatively, a reduction in scheduled benefits of 27% would permit full payment of those smaller benefits through 2097. And of course, a combination of changes to taxes and benefits could also suffice. And policymakers can have different changes apply to people of different uh, incomes and people of different ages. Now, additional changes would be needed, though, to ensure solvency beyond 2097. The aging of the population is a key factor affecting the finances of Social Security. In our projections, the number of people aged 65 or older who are less likely to work and pay payroll taxes and who are generally eligible for Social Security benefits, that, that share grows faster than the number of people aged 25 to 54 who are more likely to work and to pay, and to pay payroll taxes. Now, population growth is determined by births, deaths, and net immigrations, net immigration. Fertility in our, projection, in our projections remains lower than replacement. We project that life expectancy continues to increase, um, you know, even with the, um, uh, what's, what's happened with COVID and with overdoses and, and other things affecting uh, younger adults. Immigration becomes an increasingly important part of overall population growth. Now, all of these demographic changes affect the financial status of Social Security. <clears throat> Let me say a feature of CBO's work on Social Security is that the demographic and ec economic projections we use in our Social Security analysis are the same as we use in our budgetary analysis. So everything is consistent between what we do in Social Security and what we do for other purposes. Um, in closing, let me note that any projection over a horizon of seven decades or more is uncertain. But it's clear that action is needed to make Social Security financially sustainable. Thank you very much, and I'll be uh, happy to answer questions. Okay, so that was Dr. Swagel. Now, he had some really good information to, to provide. He was talking about the payroll tax, raising the payroll tax. Now, I, I've talked about this in the past. 
I think this is probably the path forward because raising the cap is something that you hear a lot of people talk about. However, you're going to have a fight. You're going to have Republicans mainly saying, no, we don't want to raise the cap on the wealthy. And so it's, we're probably going to have to see everyone contribute. And what I mean is they're going to have to raise a payroll tax on everyone, just like they did back in 1983. But you, he gave some numbers here, and I think this is really good, because right now workers are paying 6.2% and their employer is matching that 6.2%. So we're looking at 12.4% that's going towards Social Security. However, he was talking about in order to extend the program out to 2097, we would need to raise that payroll tax, the total of the payroll tax, to 17.5%. So it, would be, it wouldn't be a large increase, and I'm sure they would graduate it, so it's not going to happen overnight uh, for people who are working as well as the employers that have to pay uh, the payroll tax. But it would be something that would help secure Social Security until 2097. Now, he also said when we're looking at these projections, we can't, I mean, this is not something where we know for a fact that it will last until 2097. They just have a good idea that it could extend it until 2097. Now, with this, could you see an increase for Social Security recipients? That would have to be something that would be looked into. He did not address that. However, there would be extra money, and I would think that those trust funds would start to grow again. And if the trust funds start to grow, you now have more leverage and you can do more things with the money that's coming in. He also talked about immigration. Now, this is something I'm going to leave this for a later video because I want to do a separate video on this topic. But when it comes to immigration, that is another avenue that you can look at to bring more money into the Social Security Administration. And so, like I said, I will focus on that in another video. But basically, essentially, you have more people that are working. And if you have more immigrants coming in and working, they're paying into the payroll tax and that money is going towards Social Security. So that's just another thing that we can look at, because right now birth rates are down. And because birth rates are down, that means less people are in the workforce, less people are paying into the payroll tax. And so I'll continue this discussion in a separate video. But I have a question for you guys, especially the people who are working right now. Would you be willing to have an increase in your payroll tax where you have to pay a little bit more if that meant that you would have Social Security without any cuts or anything like that, would you be willing to raise that, that payroll tax? Let me know in the comments below. If you guys have any other questions about anything that was discussed today, also let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.